So this is to do with Rashbourne. Right, quick disclaimer. My name's Dawn. Everything that you hear in this video is from my own research. It's my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. That out of the way, let's get on it. Okay, uh, it's just, just a quick one this, just a quick mid midweek. Um, you know when I told you I was looking for that, what the judge said? It's not only what you hear, it's what you don't hear. Um, I, st I know you said it was the Arthur hearing, and believe me, I've gone through it again. And I st I st I this is part of where this comes from, actually. But um, I still can't find it. It's not, it's not on that, unless I've got part of that Arthur hearing missing. But believe me, I've not just watched it on from one channel. I've watched it from a few, and I can't find it on there. So, anyway... Right, we know he said it. We all know he said it. So, while I was watching it again, this stood out at me for some reason. And I, again, I didn't spot this before. Um, but before I show it you, um, I, what I want you to do is, I want you to just listen to Georgia Kappelman. Um, I'm not going to put the video um, as it was. Uh, well, as it was happening on, I'm just, uh, I'm just mainly just going to put the audio on, and I just want you to, to listen to it and tell me or have a think at that moment. Um, if you can't see Georgia Kappelman's face, you you're behind her. Um, what you're actually thinking is happening. So here we go. In the more than eight years since Dan was brutally murdered, the Markell family has endured unfathomable grief and loss. Their only son was stolen from them, and members of the Adelson family have not allowed them to have a continuous and loving relationship with their grandchildren, Dan's two young boys. Throughout this horror, the Markells continue to fight for complete justice for their son and to be reunited with their grandsons. The interest so I think it's fair to say that if you can't actually see Georgia Kappelman, it does sound like she needs a minute, like she's a little bit upset. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna play you I'm gonna play you what happened during that during that time. I'm actually going to play a little bit before leading up to it and and then after it. Now she does have a pause and she does, I will say this in advance, she moves from like a laptop to a notes or the other way around. So you could say that, uh, no, she was just gathering where she was, but I'm not sure about that. I think she sounds slightly upset. After that happens, I want you to take a close look what Rushbourne does. Okay. Right. Here we go. And the very real risk that he would flee, the risk that he would corruptly influence trial testimony, and the risk that he would conspire with or be influenced by members of his family, strongly support the denial of Mr. Adelson's motion for pretrial release. In the more than eight years since Dan was brutally murdered, the Markell family has endured unfathomable grief and loss. Their only son was stolen from them, and members of the Adelson family have not allowed them to have a continuous and loving relationship with their grandchildren, Dan's two young boys. Throughout this horror, the Markells continue to fight for complete justice for their son and to be reunited with their grandsons. The interests of the public and of the Markell family as victims of this heinous crime support the denial of Mr. Adelson's motion. The, the thing that I thought with that was your, see, I was going to say then, you're too engrossed with this family. It would be, it's been running their cases for whatever, however long. And you could also argue 
that we did see George Koppelman um, give um, Ruth, you know, a, a bit of a hug um, at times. So you could say, well, but she didn't actually do it from the stand. She didn't actually do it from, you know, while she was in her professional mode doing the case. He sat there and he, and he puts his hands on Charlie's arm as though to say, oh, you know, are you all right? Again, the Markels can see this, and this is what I don't. This is what I don't get with them at all. That for all this pleading, innocent, and all the rest of it, like I said last week, you know, we've enough of us have done them videos over Charlie smirking, and that. I'm not. I know that sometimes you know you can have you can. Uh, somebody might something might happen in the courtroom, and somebody might laugh. No matter how much I watch that or how many times I watch that, I can't think what the purpose of it was. And as a lawyer, I would have expected him to do just the opposite and to stay focused on what he's doing. And maybe even just write a note. If he, if he wants to give him some kind of comfort, for what reason, I don't know. But if he does, just write, just write on a little note. They've, they've been writing notes left, right and centre, but don't publicly comfort him like that as I say you know it's like it's you know it's okay like or I know you you know George Kappelman is sort of like trying to put over um Ruth and Phil's statement and Shelley's and you know he, he's he's like that to Charlie I don't know I don't know I just thought uh, not warranted at all, not needed. And I think the less he does of that, the better. Because if if you think, I hope he doesn't think that when he's doing that and it's like on trial with the jurors and that, you know, he's going to continue to do things like that, that he thinks, that he thinks um, it'll serve some kind of purpose. Uh, I just want to let him know that it won't, other than being, it looks insensitive. That's what it looks. Anyway, so that was it. It was just um, it was just a quick jump on today. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you know the little touch your button down there, and then just over to the left, I think it is, is a subscribe. So just give that a little. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.